What is a Gaussian codebook? Well, codebooks are used to send information over communication channels. And the Gaussian codebook is the one that achieves the highest possible rate for the additive white Gaussian noise channel, a particular type of channel, very common channel. And here's the equation for the capacity of the channel, and the capacity is the highest rate. We'll come back to this equation later, but let's start with an example and let's think about practically what's going on. In order to send information over a channel, you need to send a waveform. We're going to start by considering the binary waveform. So here is a waveform in time over a period of time, capital T, we're going to send either this signal, which is one volt for that period, or we'll send nothing. And that's going to represent the binary one or the binary zero. But of course, we want to send more complicated messages like words, for example. And words are made up of letters. So if we've got letters, and let's think of the letters in the alphabet, A, B, C, and so on, there's 26 of these, and we can only send them as ones or zeros if we start by considering that channel, then we need a way of mapping the A's, B's, and C's to ones and zeros. Well, there's 26 of them, so if we have five bits, then we've got two to the power five possibilities, that's 32, that's more than 26, so we can do a one-to-one -one mapping from the message, which is the letter that we want to send, to a binary sequence. So for example, A could be mapped to all zeros, B to four zeros and a one, and so on. Now we need to think, well, in the channel, there's going to be errors. So we, for, for each of these five zeros, we could send, spend five time periods sending uh, nothing. For this one, we could send four time periods of nothing, and then this one, and so, and so on. But when they get to the receiver, they're going to be received with noise, so we won't exactly receive them correctly. So therefore, we need to find a way to change our sequence into a sequence which is robust to those errors. And that means we're going to start thinking about sending more than just the five bits. And so this is where we get the first idea of the code book. Okay, so let's think about a binary code book for this scenario. And let's say, for example, the channel we're dealing with, maybe they get on average three errors every eight bits that are transmitted, for example. So that means the rate is going to be five divided by eight. You get five reliable bits getting through for every eight that you send. So if that was the case, and we're just thinking about that as an example, then we need to change this sequence of five for each of these letters into a sequence of length eight. And here we have what we call a binary code book. So this is where we're starting to see the code books. Now here, we're, we're again, we've got eight of these now, so we're going to spend longer periods of time. Each one of these is going to be sent with a waveform like this, either this one or zero. And we've, in, the way we generated this was by taking the original five and then adding three on the end. But we did it in a clever way, so we do it what we call parity. So for example, in this case, what I've done is I've used a parity where you add up all of these, uh, the five in binary, and then you add a bit at the end that's going to make that even. So you've got an odd number in here, for example, you add another one, makes it even. So that's parity over the whole lot. Then the next bit I've added is where we've done it for the odd bits in the sequence. So zero, zero, one, that's odd. So we need to add another one to make it even. And the last one here, for example, we did it where we did the even one. So this was zero, zero. So it's already even. So we keep it as a zero in the third one. But what we can do now, we can see within this code book, we have redundancy because there's relationships between all the bits so that if one of these gets received in error, we're going to be able to detect the error and hopefully correct the error. So this is uh, what we've done to try to overcome the errors in the channel. And that's why we need a code book. Now we're going to ask ourselves, is this the best code book that we could have? Could we, in fact, use less time periods, because this requires eight time periods, could we use perhaps less time periods and still get our message through with the same overall reliability? So let's think about that for a minute here. And let's think, well, what we could do is instead of just sending this signal or zero, instead we could have four levels perhaps. So let's think about a scenario where there are four levels in the code book, not just two. So in this case, we could think 
that now instead of having, what we could do if there's four levels is we could group every two of these together, for example, and then we've got two bits which can relate to four possible levels, and then we can uh, send those four instead of sending this eight. Now, what we can't get something for nothing, so what a penalty have we paid? Well, those levels would need to be closer together because we're going to be having to compare sending with the same overall transmit power. So we can have four levels, but they have to be closer together. That means that the bit rate is higher because we're sending four uh, instead of sending eight. So we, our bit rate's gone up, but our error rate's gone up. So therefore, we're going to need to put some parity on those ones. So instead uh, of that, instead of the rate being five on eight, we might, for example, have five on six. So it might be, as we said before, uh, here's an example of this where we've uh, grouped them together. And again, I'll use this one as an example. Zero, zero, those two together come to a zero. The next two zeros give you the zero. Then you've got one, one, which is a three. And then you've got a one, zero, which is a two. And so uh, then we've got to do some parity on these. And it might be that you've, you, you add these extra two uh, to the end so that your sequence is of length six. Again, to remind ourselves, now that we've got multiple levels, we can send more bits per level, more, sorry, more bits per symbol, but they're going to have a higher error on them. So we've, we've halved the number of symbols going from, four to, uh, going from eight down to four, but they've got more errors on them, so we need to put more parity. And so that's, this is now a code book, which in this example, I've just said that uh, we needed two was enough. For example, let's consider that. Then we've got a rate code rate book with a rate of five on six. So we've got different levels. We're not sending binary anymore. So that means we've been able to go to five to six. So we've gone from a rate of five on eight to a, to a higher number, which is five on six. Can we do even better? And that's where we come to this idea of the Gaussian code book. So we've started to think about moving to different constellations. So let's think about that. And I'm, but just before we get to the final Gaussian one, let's just look at what this is uh, in, a, um, in a plot of the histogram of these points. And that's going to get us to this Gaussian. So if we look at here, well, we've only got ones and zeros here. And so if I was to draw a histogram of this, uh, then it would, um, it would look, if the value was here, for example, on this axis, and this is the probability of that value. So let me say, for example, that these are values of x. So this is... Uh, this is the possible values of x, and x can either be uh, 0 or 1, or let me actually plot it as being negative 1 and 1. So that's often the case. Instead of a 0 and 1, you, you do a negative 1 so that you get a balanced waveform over time and the charge doesn't build up. So let's think about this. So uh, this waveform is going to represent the 1, and we're going to, instead of sending a 0, we're going to send the negative of this waveform. So everywhere where there's a 0 here, we're going to send a negative of that waveform. So then if we're looking at the, the histogram of that, we will see that there is going to be half of the, if, if these bits are equally likely, uh, then you're going to have half of them are going to be at minus one and half of them are going to be at one. So this is a histogram. In fact, I've drawn here more than a histogram. I've drawn the probability density function uh, of the values that you're going to have if you send all these code words out one after another as you're sending your messages and continuing to send all of your messages. Then here, the values of X, which is the values that you're sending out into the channel, in this case are either going to be plus one or minus one, no other values. So this is zero everywhere else. And the probability of sending, wanting, needing to send a one in your code book is going to be the same as the probability of sending a minus one. It's a half each. What about for the four level code book? Well, the four level code book we have now four levels. And again, uh, instead of sending 0, 1, 2, and 3, it, we, what we're going to do is we're going to send um, uh, 1, 3, negative 1, and negative 3. But also, the important point to point out here is you're going to have to scale them so that you've got the same power as we said before. So it won't be, neg it won't be uh, all of these are 1 on gamma, where gamma is the power of the average power. Uh, and so now you're going to have a PDF here for uh, this code book, this four level code book. It's going to have four values and they're going to be a quarter each. And so this will be um, 
what we have here. Uh, this will be the four different values. Uh, and so this is the, the minus three divided by gamma, uh, minus one divided by gamma, uh, one on gamma, and three on gamma, where gamma again is that normalization so that the power of these two is the same. And the height of these is a quarter. Okay, so this is the, the code books and this is a different way of thinking about them. This is, the, this is showing the, the relative occurrence of the four different levels. And they're all equally likely. Now this is spread out more than this one. You can compare these two. And now let's come back to this Gaussian code book. What is the Gaussian code book? Well, it's the optimal thing to do. It's where the rate is maximized. So here's the Gaussian code book. Uh, it's going to have code words which are not just made up of noughts and ones or naught one, two or threes, but it's going to be having individual elements of each code word drawn randomly from a Gaussian distribution. And so hopefully you can see now that that's a sort of natural progression. Um, and this is the PX here that is in the formula up here, if you notice that. I'll just come back to that in a minute. So here, instead of just having a um, finite number where we only had two values we could pick over here, minus one and one, and here we only had four values that we could pick, now in the Gaussian code book, we are gonna be able to pick any value. And it's going to be picked with the probability given by the Gaussian curve. So when you generate your code words, here we generated them um, by just choosing to put all zeros for the A and then this one here, or, or zeros with a one for the B and then adding that parity. We chose that in the design of our code book. Here in the Gaussian code book, we are actually randomly selecting each of the elements of our code word. And we're going to randomly select them for the next code word and randomly select them for the next code word. And what the uh, theory tells us is that if we do this, then we will get code words which enable the data to be transmitted with the highest possible rate, meeting the capacity of the channel. And if we look back here at the formula here, what, what is it? This is the mutual information between the input and the output. And what you need to do to find the capacity is maximize that over all the different possible input distributions. And so here we can see three different input distributions. You can put each of these input distributions. That's what the choice that you've got in the design of your code book. And the one that maximizes this mutual information is this one here, where you randomly choose the elements from a Gaussian distribution. Now, it, oh, this is not going to be the best code book for this example where you only had 26 letters uh, because the code words aren't very long and uh, it, it doesn't actually give you the theoretical result. This theoretical result holds in the limit when the code words are infinitely long. So that's one of the aspects of that theoretical result. So when the code words are infinitely long, and what that means back over here on the message side is that's when you have every single possible uh, message you could want to send. And it's not just the letters of the alphabet. Now you, you group letters together, for example, uh, maybe the first message in the infinitely long code book case, maybe the first message is, is the entire works of Shakespeare, for example, as the first message. And then it would be represented by a code word, which is infinitely long. And the second message might be um, a, an, another long text, Moby Dick, for example. And then that is represented by a code word which is infinitely long. If you've got an infinitely long code word, you can represent an infinitely complex message. So it really is a limiting result uh, that gets us to the point where we have this Gaussian code book. But it, the rate of that would be the capacity of the channel. So I'll just put a C there for the capacity of the channel. So hopefully this has given you more insight into the Gaussian code book. Uh, if it has, uh, give it a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Um, check out the information below where there's details about a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.